you're still there inside my chest I've been so worried you've been so still guys welcome Where welcome we, be? we are sat in LaGuardia in New York no we're not we're sat in my garage in Portsmouth but you get my meaning welcome along to the video um, today is going to be a conversation on multi monitor setup with two computers there are lots of great youtube videos out there on this kind of a subject but because my flight sim is a little bit organic and it's a little bit diy and it didn't come from any set template and it's grown from something of nothing to what it is today i thought it would be quite interesting just to put this out there to see if it would help for anybody so breaking into, I suppose, the disclaimer for this video is what I'm advising and saying is based on my own experiences and with the machinery that I have. I've got an i5-10400 with a 1660 Super, which runs the main monitor, the captain's left window, and the captain's instrumentation monitor. I then have a slightly older i5-8600 which has got a 1060 graphics card running the first officer's right sided window, their instrumentation panel and this monitor down in the centre column which serves to be something like a 737 Max enunciator panel kind of thing. I've got it to the point where I am happy with the graphics level that the game is producing and the settings that I have and the frames per second i.e. the actual smoothness and performance of the, the flying itself um, on that point I think most simmers would say that if you start to drop beneath 20 frames per second you are not going to get a very uh, pleasant experience and certainly it will take a lot of the, the reality away from it um, you'll have stuttering moments the nothing worse than if you're doing a final approach and suddenly you have stutters within the, the gameplay itself because it takes a lot of the immersion away from the uh, from the gameplay but similarly if you're a bit like me and you want the best of both worlds and you want to have a nice graphical experience and real world um, realism when you are flying and flying into big cities like New York or, or London you, uh, you need to turn the settings up high enough on X-Plane 11 that it can bring up enough objects, uh, it can uh, render to the right and appropriate levels. Bringing those two things in harmony when you begin to build multi-monitors in becomes more challenging purely because of the, the load that the machines are, are going to have to take. Now. I've seen some very good YouTube videos out there where one very powerful machine can run all of the displays that you need and then you can wrap them around um, and probably it's a far less complicated process than what I've got but as I mentioned at the start of the video mine didn't really kind of set out with any with any plan it was just sat on a desk with a, a machine and a, and a yoke to begin with and then like every home cockpit it evolves over time and here we are today and now for me it's all about maximum immersion whilst experiencing as real world flying as it can be. I think for anybody that has flown planes before the frames per second is a really important thing because you want to be able to experience as much realism in the flight as you can. For a cockpit builder however who wants all the bells and whistles you also want to be able to look at the pretty pictures as you're flying around. So these are the graphic settings that I have for machine number one. And these are the graphic settings that I have for machine number two. Now the conversation about fields of view and actually setting the orientation up of the, uh, the monitors themselves, that's a whole other video really and there's lots of great videos out there to help you with that. 
it really is trial and error because I don't think there is any one cockpit which has uh, all of the same monitors at the same angles and all of that just takes time, effort and playing around with it really. So um, if you need any help setting up a multi-monitor uh, surround system, there are some really great YouTubes out there to, uh, to assist you with that. But these are the, the, the settings that I'm using and they are quite high quality. They're far higher than what I had before when I was running just a two monitor display um, with one machine. So the main machine is taking the load of the, uh, the, the front and left um, outward facing graphics, but effectively the right machine is performing as the slave in as much as I have a second copy of X-Plane 11 running on that and I'm using it as an external display. Now this works brilliantly for what I'm looking to do and all I wanted my monitors to be was an outside view. Because I've built the MIP and the cockpit and the dash in and around it. So I'm now at a point where I can control the 737 on X-Plane without any need to interact with the game itself. Anyways, there's my uh, fairly non-eloquent explanation to how my two computers run my three monitor display of the graphics. I hope it helps. Any questions feel free to ask and will help where I can if I haven't covered off things as clearly as I can. Um, just to finish off and say that this really only does work for an external window display. I think if you're going to go down the road of in cockpit displays you will need to do a far better job than me with two machines or maybe consider going high-end with just one machine and having a wraparound type display. I'll put plenty of information in the description. Please have a look at that. And thank you if you've tuned in to watch this video. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I know that there are a lot of uh, home cockpit builders out there, many who have taken theirs to a far higher level than mine, and I learned so much from them, and if I can pass any assistance on from uh, what I've learned through this process, happy to do so. Happy flying, see you again soon. Thanks for watching.